What's up everyone, welcome to another video. In this video, I will test this digital hanging scale. This is one of the first and most popular results when I search Amazon. It's a best seller, with over 23,000 reviews, and costs less than $10. It has a 110 pound weight capacity. Let's run it through the whole weight range, and see if it's accurate, and if it holds up. First, let's open the box and check it out. We have the Dr. Meter, digital hanging scale. Available in black, blue, and red. Opening the box, we have instructions, batteries, and the scale. There's a retractable metal handle to hold the scale during use, and a metal hook to hang the item that's being weighed. And the metal hook has a storage location. It just snaps into the back of the scale when it's not being used, and it can be snapped in either direction. Now, let's install the two AA batteries included with the scale and check out the features. Pressing the on-off button turns it on. Pressing the unit button cycles it between pounds, ounces, and kilograms. The tear button zeroes it if it's not showing zero. And the on-off button turns it back off. The scale has some surprising weight to it. It does not feel hollow and cheap. It's advertised for 110 pounds or 50 kilograms. And it also includes a retractable tape measure, 40 inches long. Now, let's test it through the full weight range and see how it holds up. But first, check out that smiley face. It's smiling! It's a happy scale! We'll be doing the testing here in the Rise of Iron Gym because I've got weight plates here and here. I've got two and a halfs, fives, tens, 25s, 35s, and 45s. And another set over here. And we'll hang it from the top of the power cage right here. To hang it, I used a nylon strap through the handle. Then a carabiner to connect the strap. And here it is, ready for testing. Before we start testing all the weights, here is the functionality. When you press any button, it beeps, and the blue backlight stays on for 7 seconds, then turns off automatically. When you hang a weight from it, it can't be variable. It must be steady and constant for 4 seconds. Then it will beep, and the weights will be locked in. Note that the digits are always visible with the blue backlight on. The camera angle just makes it look like it's completely blue with no digits shown. With the weight removed, the locked in value is still shown. That was two and a half pounds. Increasing the weight to five pounds doesn't change anything. It still shows the locked in value. The scale must be teared to clear the locked in value and measure something new. To start out, I will use this bag. It's nice and big and I can easily just set weight plates in it. The scale is teared to zero with the bag hanging from it, so the measured weight will be the plates only. My lightest plates are 2.5 pounds, so we'll start there and go up in increments of 2.5 pounds. So here's the first measurement with a 2.5 pound plate. The scale reads 2.48 pounds. So far, it's accurate. Let's run it all the way up to 110 pounds. But first, danger, danger, this is dangerous. Weight plates could fall and crush my feet. Wearing steel-toed shoes is a safety precaution, but it's still dangerous. So I recorded the measurements of the two and a half pound plate, then swapped it out for a five pound plate. I teared the scale to zero and measured the five pound plate and recorded the results, which was 4.94 pounds. The scale is still looking accurate. And that was the process. I'm not going to show every single weigh-in. There were 34 of them, and that would be boring. I'll show some highlights along the way, and I will show a graph with all of the results at the end. So I increased the weight by 2.5 pounds, all the way up to 70 pounds. And here we are at 70 pounds. The little chain link and hook are doing just fine with no problems. However, this bag isn't going to last much longer. It's got a pretty wicked rip and I can hear some creaking and tearing sounds. I was ready. At the next level up, the bag tore. Now it's trash. It was convenient while it lasted, but now it's time to use some chain. For the rest of the measurements, I'll be hanging the weight plates with a piece of chain and a carabiner. Before I started, I weighed just the chain, so I can subtract it from the measurement, resulting in the weights of the plates only. So I ran the chain through the plates, then zeroed the scale, then hung the plates on the scale, 
Then I recorded the total weight, and I subtracted the weight of the chain, resulting in the weight plates only. And this was the process. I did eight more weigh-ins, in increments of five pounds, from 70 pounds all the way up to 110 pounds. Here we are at the final weigh-in of 110 pounds. The weight of the chain has not been subtracted yet, and the scale is still pretty accurate. Everything is looking good and holding up strong with no problems. This little chain link did make me nervous, but it held up and it's doing the job. Now let's tally up the results and check them out. This graph compares the nominal weight to the measured weight. The green bars are the nominal weight stamped on the weight plates, and the black bars are the value that the scale measured. The scale accurately measured the weight plates through the whole range, from 0 to 110 pounds. This graph shows the difference between the nominal weight stamped on the plates and the value that the scale measured. The difference was 0.92 pounds or less. And here's the raw data, if you're interested. You can pause the video and take a closer look. I will also point out that these weight plates are not certified calibrated. I weighed each plate in a previous video, and they were all within 0.6 pounds of nominal, but they were all weighed with a bathroom scale, so who knows? Regardless of the small discrepancies, this inexpensive little scale surprised me. It's accurate through the whole range, and it handled the 110 pound load as advertised, but it made me nervous. I certainly would not stand under it. Overall, I would definitely recommend this little scale based on my personal experience. I hope you found this helpful or entertaining. Have a great day, and I'll see you in the next video.